Good morning. On this edition of Tire Repairs with Joe. So this morning I woke up to a flat tire. Well, I didn't wake up to the flat tire. I woke up and did other things. But right as I was about to leave to go to the house where I've been working and I have all my live stream and my Bible and my camera. I left my Bible there because of course that's where I was going to be to do my live stream. Um, so today we can talk about tire repairs. So you get yourself a kit like one of these. They're very handy. And you get one of these cool little tools. This is the reamer. And so you pull out the screw and you shove this thing in there and you go back and forth a little bit and it kind of roughs up the section. Next, using these little goopy black thread things, that's the actual name, uh, you stick them into this tool and then you shove it in the hole and you pull it out and all of a sudden you have a repaired tire. This is my mechanic in training. So, now you guys know how to repair tires. I know that's why you always hop on and join me, is for handy tips like this on life. Other than when you can't find where the hole is on the tire, and then you tell your wife to take it a Les Schwab like I did. Um, but I made a lot of progress before I finally gave up and told her to take the tire. So what's this have to do with anything else that we normally talk about? I don't know, it has nothing to do. I just didn't have my Bible, but I thought I'd just deviate today because I do that from time to time. So what else is on my mind? Well, you know, I've been studying for this coming Sunday and we're talking a lot about, well, this coming Sunday, I want to talk about America, home of the free. And I want to talk about uh, the, the history of our great nation. And I hate to tell you guys, but since you guys are special, um, I'm gonna give you guys the little sneak peek, which is simply this, is that even in the Bible, I'll give you guys a, a Bible verse on Sunday, I'll make it hunt for it right now. When people look at the history, their history, and they, they find out how far away they've drifted from the way things started. When you look at the history of a church movement, and you look at how far away things have, well, does, you, does mom, do you need them? Yeah, go, mom needs you, bud. So, when you look at how far away a church has gotten from where it started, I joke about how geothermal scanning can pick up the, the, fr the heat from the friction of people like John Knox or John Wesley or Martin Luther rolling over in their graves. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't branches of those churches uh, that are still holding fast. I'm sure there are. Um, many churches and mainstream denominations still have conservative branches that are holding to the Word of God. But I wonder how many people who attend some of those churches today know their history. I am always inspired when I learn the history of the Jesus movement that birthed the church that I came out of. And I think as a nation, as we look at our history, we'll realize that America is so far from what we started at, that we are so far from what this nation was created to be. In the Bible, in the story I'm going to mention, it sparked revival because the people, they, they needed a mirror. They needed something to look into to see how far they had drifted. Because if you just look around you, you might be under the assumption that you go to a good church that's doing well. And yet, if we go back in time, during the periods of great revival, during the founding of our nation, during, during the Jesus movement, during uh, the, the revival of 19, what would it have been, 05? No, anyway, the, the, uh, the 
Azusa Street Revival, Fulton Street Revival, Second Great Awakening, First Great Awakening. You go back, even if you go to a great church today, it probably would look like a floundering church compared to, to or it would look, you know, equal to a floundering church back then, or just it wouldn't compare. If we understood what families look like today versus what they've looked like in the past, if we understand what churches look like today, what they look like, if we understand, when we know our history, then we can realize how far we've gone from it. And then we can challenge ourselves if we're willing to return. And I think that's an important thing. You know, until someone reads and studies, I don't care if you go to the revival church, if you've never read about what revival looks like, you don't know what you're missing. And once you read the history of revivals, the history of our church, the history of uh, the church, not our church, but the church, the history of our nation, you begin to realize, whoa, this isn't what things are actually supposed to look like. And I thought, you know, I was going to an amazing church and I'm not downplaying our church. What I'm trying to do is look at us and other churches in light, in light of what it looks like when the Holy Spirit's moving and the church is on fire the way it ought to be. Our nation was birthed by people who had experienced revival and they formed it to try and embrace what they were experiencing. And so I really do want to challenge you. If you've never, you know, even watched a short video on YouTube just that describes what churches look like during the Great Awakening, Second Great Awakening, Fulton Street Revival. I mean, during these times, you know, I would challenge you to, to, to do some history research and look at what they look like and then and look at what you look like and the people who are next to you look like and then ask yourself, is this where God wants us or is something missing? Is there something more? And so you can see church growth without seeing real Christian growth and discipleship growth, right? You can see a whole lot of other good things these days without seeing really what ought to be happening. And so, yeah, I just encourage you guys, fix the flat tire of uh, your faith and, and examine your faith and examine things and, and just ask God, God, if, if you were to just radically transform my life and make me into a super Christian, what would that look like? And imagine what would it look like? What would look different you think if you were like a super Christian? And then ask yourself, looking at that, imagining that, and then looking at where you're at right now, why not? If I was revived, I probably wouldn't be doing these things. So the question is, why not just stop? If I was just, you know, if I was baptized by the Holy Spirit and on fire, I'd probably be off doing this and this. Then why not just start doing those things? Why wait? Yeah, there's too much to talk about. So I'll stop here and encourage you guys. Uh, do a little history. Come to church this Sunday and I'll, I'll give you a lot of history. Um, hoping to do Sunday night in the morning this coming Sunday. I like to mix it up from time to time. So God bless you guys. Have an amazing day. Pray to God about the priorities of your life. Pray to God about where you spend your time, your money, and your energy. And let's try and make the best of this life and store up riches in the next one. Say goodbye, Judah. Bye. You guys take care.